think so. I might have to use the mic up here. I'm going to probably do that. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Well, it's great to be here and to see so many faces come out on a really snowy, slushy um, morning. And I'm really excited to be able to share some of the work that we're doing at Northwestern through a lab and uh, the work that uh, the colleagues that I've been working alongside have been doing for several years now, even before I started getting involved. So I serve as a research coordinator and I mostly teach meditation and yoga to different cancer populations. Let me go ahead and grab this then. Ah, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about mindfulness and the body. And we're going to unpack what does that really look like? Because what happens during cancer is we become really disconnected from our bodies as a way of trying to get through everything that happens in that process. And that's a really okay thing. In fact, it's a mode of survival and it's, it's really wise in some ways that the body does this. But sometimes we get so far from our bodies that it's hard to even come back inside or connect or really feel what we're feeling. Or sometimes it's so much feeling that it's overwhelming. So how do we begin to kind of work with the body, both with physical sensation and pain, and also all the stuff that comes with emotion, right? Tension in the body, anxiety, all of that. How do we begin to come back inside of that? So I'm going to give you a few examples of how to use mindfulness in your daily life. And then I'm going to talk about some of the research that we're doing out of Dr. David Victorson's lab at Northwestern. Uh, David Victorson is really passionate about mindfulness, and he's an amazing person to work with. And uh, several of his uh, studies have continued to receive funding, and we just received funding actually for two other new mindfulness studies, which is exciting. So I'm going to share some of the results from that work that we're doing. And then I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about how to bring this into your daily life then. Okay, so let's talk about this, mindfulness and the body. Well, let's start, what is mindfulness? And mindfulness is moment-to-moment, -moment, non-judgmental awareness. So moment-to-moment, -moment, what's this really mean, right? Because we have these brains that have a capacity to move into the future and think about and plan for things and prepare, which is wonderful. We also have the capacity to think about the past and really reflect on things that have happened to us. And that can be really helpful, these two different ways in which our mind can move forward and move backwards. But in reality, our entire life is lived moment to moment. We don't actually have that future time yet. We don't have the time where we all get in our cars and we go home. We're thinking about that and we'll receive that but we don't have it yet in this moment. Right now we're just sitting in here in this room. And we don't have the time when we were eating our breakfast anymore. We can think about that, but we can't go back into that time yet, okay? So we only have moment to moment. But really, if we're honest, we live our entire lives often planning and in the future or analyzing and thinking about the past. And we can really see this when we think about how we spend time with our loved ones. So how many people in here is you go and you have dinner with someone and maybe you're worried about something and you really want to enjoy that dinner with that person and catch up with them, but the worry keeps like popping up and you keep thinking about an appointment or something else you have to do and pretty soon you don't even feel like you're with that person. Does anyone have that experience? Yeah, yeah, a few people raise their hand. So how do we get into the moment and how do we keep our minds in that space? And non-judgment. So we have this ability in our prefrontal cortex to judge things very quickly, if it's good, if it's bad. And this judgment is, is helpful because it helps us kind of assess where things need to go and what needs to be taken care of. But how often do we judge something before we actually know what it is? So there's this judgment piece that always comes in with the mind. So mindfulness is moment to moment, non-judgmental, dropping that judgment and experiencing something just for what it is, and awareness. Awareness is uh, really all of our senses being engaged, sight, touch, smell, sound. And having that awareness allows us to be engaged. So let's jump in and try an exercise right now. So I'm gonna invite you to either close your eyes or just gaze down at your table. Either one is just fine. 
And this is what some of the practices I do with a lot of different cancer patients look like. So as you're looking down at the ground or gazing at your table or eyes are closed, I want you to think about your feet. Think about your right foot and then think about your left foot. Think about your toes. Think about the shape of your foot. Let all these thoughts come in about your feet. You might find that there's some judgment there about what your feet look like or where your feet have taken you. Let your thoughts just kind of come in one by one and note them. Okay, and then go ahead and open your eyes if they're not open yet. So that experience of bringing thought to our feet. We're gonna try something different. Same exact thing, go ahead and bring your gaze down or close your eyes. And I'm gonna invite you to bring your full awareness to your feet and sense your feet from the inside out. So begin to notice where your feet make contact with your shoe. Notice where you can feel your shoe sort of close on your foot or there's some pressure there, perhaps at your laces. What does that feel like? And sensing where the skin makes contact with your sock. Sensing your entire feet just as they are. Okay, so go ahead and open your eyes. So I'm wondering if we can have some brave volunteers to speak to what they noticed in that sensing exercise that we just did. What sensation did you become aware of? Yeah. I felt calm and um, a sense of relief, but like a burden lift, lifting off of me. what we do um, when we in our thinking mind we're in a doing and a and sort of a planning mode or an analyzing mode but when we're in the sensation and in our bodies it's it's in that moment to moment mode which is non-doing and there's often pleasure in staying with the sensation itself so these are some of the practices that we do in a mindfulness class and it's a way of coming back and connecting to the body so this looking within the body is called interceptive awareness. And interceptive awareness is this awareness of what's happening in the body. There's these, uh, the nervous system has a highway all the way to the brain. And in this highway, we're able to really track what's happening in the body. Interceptive awareness is another way of saying bodily awareness. And bodily awareness is important because what we feel in our bodies often impacts how we behave. Right? If we feel really agitated, it often impacts how we relate to people, what we say, and what we do. So being able to come into the body and regulate that can be enormously helpful in how we go about living our daily lives. So let's talk about some of the research that then is happening in this field of mind-body connection that I just gave you a quick dive into of what, what the exercise actually looked like. So there's a study that's occurring right now out of Dr. David Victorson's lab, and it's called Redefine AYAO. It's called Reducing Emotional Distress, Enhancing Function, and Improving Network Engagement in Adolescent and Young Adult Oncology. This is, study was funded by the American Cancer Society, Illinois Division, and is a Robert Lurie Comprehensive Cancer Center grant as well. 
we're moving towards the end of our study and it's been a full year in which we've been collecting data and I'm going to share some of those findings with you today. This is our study team, a fabulous group of individuals that has been a lot of fun to work with. And um, moving forward then, mindfulness is a eight-week program in which people diagnosed with cancer or any other disease can enroll in. And we learn to teach, we teach meditation, yoga, and a sitting meditation as well. So you can see here is the eight weeks. Their class is about two and a half hours long. Um, we meet once a week, and then there's a retreat in the middle. Okay. So during this study, we've come across some unexpected visitors and what people are saying about the ways in which they're connecting with the body. And over and over again, it's not just I'm noting this or I'm noting that. It's this overall bodily awareness that's being developed. And so there's some questions that we started to ask. How are participants talking about their bodies as a result of mindfulness practice? How does cancer affect AYA's relationship to their bodies? And how might this relationship be restored? So the process in which we underwent, is we took all of the home practice logs that participants had been filling out, as well as the mid-course review, and we looked at what are people actually saying? So what are cancer survivors saying about their connection to their body? What are they reporting? And we took 30 transcripts. We went through a process of qualitative analysis where we began to code each of these phrases and determine what the themes were. So these are the variety of different themes. And I'm going to talk about four themes today. And in talking about this, I'm hoping that you maybe hear your own experience in what people are saying. You relate to that. And then we can take that as a platform for how do you work with some of these similar things that maybe you're experiencing in your body. So the themes are increased bodily awareness. So people becoming more aware of what's actually happening in their body. You might think, how do you do that, right? Like, I feel like I'm on hyper awareness of the body at this point. But that is one of the themes that arose. The next is a negative relationship to the body. So people feeling like they really dislike their body. They're angry at their body all sorts of things. A positive relationship to the body. So some restoring things are happening in, their, in the way in which people were reporting, connecting to their body, and how they were feeling in their body as they went through the course. And then there was lots of observations on people learning about mindfulness. What was it like to actually learn to come into the body in this way that we just did? noticing the sensation rather thinking about the body, which is what we do, right? We all walk around as kind of like bobbleheads. I need to do this, I need to do that, I'm going to do this, and then, I'm, and then it's like, whoa, what did I do? I have a body here, and I'm doing all these things for this body. But it, it almost like becomes this object that we're trying to manipulate rather than a vehicle that we live inside and we breathe and we move in. So these are the themes. And let's talk about some of the, um, these are some of the themes that were housed underneath these larger themes. So a sense of feeling tired, a bodily energy, so feeling activated in certain parts of the body, strength and power, so feeling their muscle strength, bodily insights, noticing things about their body that they didn't know before, and then different sensations, so heaviness, temperature differences, and then this ability to track what's happening in the body moment to moment, as well as pain and discomfort. OK, so this is what people are saying in the course. It's easy to focus on strong sensations. But during the body scan, I can check in with the rest of my body, see if it's feeling anything, acknowledging that the majority of my body is free from pain. So the body scan is a practice where we move from bringing attention all the way from our toes to the top of our head. We move into each part. And this is what someone was saying about that experience. Another person said, I need to listen to my body more. There's not always something hurting. It's OK to have limitations. I've been through a lot. And then there's this negative relationship to the body. And this is difficulty connecting to the body, avoiding certain parts of the body, bringing the awareness there because of anxiety that might be felt there. 
the sense that the body has let me down or disappointment in which participants were reporting, sense of mistrust because of the cancer in certain areas, this fear of actually slowing down and listening, what do I really need and being afraid that they're gonna find out something that they don't want to know about. How many people are familiar with that fear? Yeah, I don't really wanna like know, i just rather not know, yeah. Feeling anger towards the body, anger that this cancer has come, what it's taken away, and just feeling really stuck in that anger. And then this was really overwhelming, the longing for the old body, thinking of all the ways the old body used to feel like and how this new body feels and really missing that old body, okay? And then this worry of slowing down and being with the body. I'm inviting people to sit by themselves alone in silence and to bring their attention to their body. And sometimes slowing down on that level, it can be relaxing. And other times it's like, that's the last place I want to go. I don't want to be with myself that way. Yeah, so how do we do that? But this is what people were reporting then in this experience of coming into their body and the negative relationship that they began to become aware of. I did not know how angry I was until this class. So this is the eight-week MBSR course. I also feel surprised at how much distance I have developed from my body and how difficult I find it to engage in my body. Although these have been pleasant, although these have not been pleasant discoveries, they have been necessary ones. I'm trying to allow myself to express some of the anger and disappointment and not feel guilty about that when in many ways my problems are so insignificant in comparison to those faced by others. That's a really honest quote about her struggle in coming into the body. Another person said, I blocked out noticing my body for a year, a full year. Another person said, I ignore my body and what it's trying to tell me because I'm afraid to listen, afraid of what it's saying, because I jumped to the conclusion it's going to be, at, to be bad or it's going to cause pain. Another person said, the body scan continues to be frustrating and different for me. So this body scan of bringing the attention to the toes and coming through each part of the body all the way to the top of the head. I feel my failure to connect with my body recently, and it does not seem to be getting easier with practice. I am getting better at keeping my mind on this task, but quite often in negative ways, by noticing how little connection I sense, rather than becoming more adept at sensing what my body feels. I never realized that I held so tight in the groin area. It was where the cancer was. Okay, so these are all things that you're probably aware of. Maybe you haven't voiced to someone, but these are things that people are coming in touch with and then voicing within a group of other young adults with cancer. So that was the negative stuff. We made it through. Okay, now let's look at some of the positive stuff that was also coming out of this. A sense of gratitude, a sense of calm in the body, curiosity of what actually is felt in the body, not just what we think we're feeling, which are two sometimes different things. Bodily patience, so being patient in what is felt. Nurturing the body and a sense of connection as well as slowing the body down and having a positive experience in that. Someone said, I carry a lot of tension in places in my body that I never really knew. It's amazing how something so simple and easy this MBSR course, can provide such long-lasting benefits in all aspects of life. I was already somewhat mindful, but now I'm becoming even more so. It's amazing how many experiences you miss. Breathing, weight on the feet, clothes on the skin, texture in the food, when you aren't being fully aware. Nice to feel cool breeze on my face and hot sun on my back was outside. The contrast was amazing and something I never really noticed. So this is examples of people coming into their bodies and experiencing something that maybe they wouldn't have noticed had they been thinking about the future or the past. And then observations of learning mindfulness. And I'm gonna kind of move through this next one quickly. Applying practices to cancer treatment, insights on the practice, on how to use it, things that helped with focus. Okay, so we're jumping ahead here. One person said, I was getting an MRI, did the body scan exercise, exercise while I was on the bed since nowhere to go and nothing else to do. So they're taking the practice from the class and now they're applying it in their life. 
I did the body scan in the doctor's office while waiting on the doctor. It made the wait much more tolerable, but I fell asleep. The rest of my day seemed much better at handling situations. So they got a little catnap in, right? Sometimes this happens when we actually relax and come into our bodies and we're not caught up in the worry or the rumination. I couldn't feel my legs, so I started to touch them. So this is really fascinating. They couldn't feel their legs, so they started to touch them. This seemed to help me notice sensation and connect with my body. So this is how someone feels at first very disconnected and then is able to move into connection. And when we looked at all of these different quotes and all of um, the home practice logs and mid-course reviews, we began to see that people were actually grouping together really different experiences all within a, the same sentence. And one of those is this awareness of pain and discomfort and then having a transforming experience. So what this means is we saw people noticing pain in their body and then really being able to track that pain and actually relate to that pain differently. My chest hurt during this exercise. Focusing on it helped me recognize it, not freak out, and it eventually went away. I did the Avon 39.3 mile walk and tried a walking meditation. It helped me focus on the feeling in my feet and the phys physical sensations around me. This helped me set aside the pain of walking that far. Afterwards, it was hard to concentrate on anything but my feet. However, I noticed that when I did concentrate on my feet, they hurt less. So you think that with pain, we should ignore it and we should forget about it and distract ourselves. And this is actually teaching the opposite. And so to be able to come back into the body and actually feel it seems to be a different way of experiencing it and maybe even provide relief. So this is totally opposite of what we're used to, right? We want to stay quiet, we want to ignore, and we want to push away. This is habitual within us, it's habitual within me. Teach this stuff and I see myself doing everything that the students tell me that they're doing too. So I'm right in the thick of it with them. And what's so fascinating though, is that all of these elephants in the room, all the things we're trying to push away, it's like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm totally fine. Don't, no, I'm fine, let's keep moving. That actually there's a way of paying attention to it that can help us work with it in a wise way. And this is, this is not what we normally do. When the mind is left up to its own devices, we don't do this. So mindfulness is a way of looking in and being in the body that's much different than what we normally do. And it essentially teaches us to crawl up on these elephants, to ride them a bit, and to begin to even befriend them so that they're no longer in the corner with us shoving them away, but rather they're right here in the open and we're able to actually cope and deal with them. So some of you might be thinking, I don't think so, not this elephant, right? Not neuropathy, not any of this stuff that we dislike. Some of you might think, I can't ride that elephant. Anxiety, you know, fear of reoccurrence, all this stuff. No, I'm not going to like bring my attention to some of those things. And some of you might think, wait, okay, how is this really possible? This isn't quite connecting for me. Yeah, I get that. So let's jump in and let's do one more practice that um, can provide an illustration. So get comfortable in your chair. It's really important to get comfortable before these practices. So maybe you want to wiggle around and get your feet situated. And then again, you can gaze down at your table or close your eyes. It's whatever's comfortable for you. And I invite you to begin to notice your breath. Notice when you're inhaling and when you're exhaling, and you don't need to change your breath. In fact, your breath is working great. You're breathing here. Your body's doing exactly what it needs to do. We're just inviting the mind and the attention to notice when the breath is coming in, that opening, expanding, and when the breath is moving out, that releasing and letting go. And begin to notice the weight 
of your body sitting in the chair. You might feel it in your upper legs and pelvis, in your spine. And notice the position of your palms. Notice where they're touching your body or the chair. And then bring your attention down to your feet, really sensing your feet again from the inside out, feeling that groundedness. And we'll move our attention now from our feet to our knees, back into our seat and into our belly with the breath. up into the chest and the shoulders. And bringing your attention to your entire jaw, letting it rest there for a moment. And then on your next inhalation, bring your attention to the back of the eyes. Let it rest there. Just experiment, see what happens. And now, since your entire body sitting here in the chair, it's just where you are right now, and then open your eyes. Come back into this space. Okay. So that is an example of moving through the body with your attention. And some of you probably noticed some different things. When you bring your attention to certain parts of the body, it can be really supportive and shifting, either releasing tension or just coming and attuning into what's felt there and it can be grounding. So this can be really helpful at doctor's appointments with crazy relatives over the holidays. And with just moments where we're just moving a million miles an hour and we don't know how to slow down. Where are your feet? That is where your body is. That is the moment you're in. So I'm gonna skip ahead here. Um, What's happening is In this process of the course and unpacking these practices, we move, we start with denial, we come in with a lot of denial. And then we begin to see the discomfort that we're feeling and the avoidance patterns that we have. Then avoidance becomes a way of sort of dipping in inch by inch to confronting some of these elephants. And then we are able to kind of stay with some of these elephants, see what they are, what are they felt, what has it felt like in the body, how is it impacting us. And this staying with becomes a way of relating, and this relating then becomes a way of connecting with what's already here, what's been here this whole time. We've just started with denial and we've moved to connecting. So these, this is what the practices offer us. And ultimately, connection with ourselves leads to better connection with others. And that's what we really want, right? To enjoy the time that we have with our loved ones. So I want to show you a short video here. And... Um, this video is, is actually for school children who experience anger, okay? So it's like, wait, why are we going now into this area? But I would say that these children do such a great job of describing how anger feels in the body. It's over different circumstances, but if you can think about when you have been angry as to what's happened and the diagnosis that you might have received or a loved one, I think we can relate to some of the things that these children are saying. And they're talking about the breath here and coming into their body through the breath. So I invite you to watch this and just see what you connect with from this video. I get really mad when my brother hits me a lot. I don't like it when you say you don't want to play with me. When I'm mad, my brain can get a headache and it can start hurting. Your blood keeps pumping because you're like really mad. And you start to get sweaty because you're getting really, really mad. And then when you start getting really mad, you turn red. When your body can't really control yourself, mad just takes over your body. I just get out of control. (laughs) It's kind of like if you had a jar and then the jar would be your brain, and then you put glitter in the jar, and that would be how you would feel. 
if you shook up the jar and the glitter went everywhere, that would be how your mind looks. And it's like spinning around and then you don't have any time to think. And you sometimes punch stuff and people when you don't really mean it. When I get angry, I feel it in my heart. I really don't like when I get angry. The amygdala really reacts, but the prefrontal cortex tries to keep it down. When I like feel like I want to, you know, get really angry and yell, I just like sometimes, you know, like take deep breaths. Like first, you find a place where you can be alone. Then you find some way to relax and calm down. When I need to calm down, I take deep breaths. I breathe in through my nose. Sometimes I close my eyes or just take deep breaths. And like it's coming down, it's like not like moving, it's slowing down and then it stops. And the heart plumps slow and then it goes into your brain. It's like all the sparkles are at the bottom of your brain. My brain like slows down and then like I feel more calm and then I'm like ready to speak to that, that person. That is <laughs> so that is a video that just captures the breathing practice in the body. And if you are interested in learning more about some of the mindfulness studies that we're doing and participating, we would love to have you, especially if you are a young adult between the ages of 18 to 39. We can get you involved in this course right away. In addition, if you want to find out more, we are, there's an organization called True North Trucks, and we take young adult cancer survivors out into the backcountry and teach them mindfulness skills there. So if you want some of these practices, I can email them to you. Thank you, Megan, and uh, welcome. This is... Oh, it's the YouTube in the background. Um, you can email me, um, please like our Facebook page and you can email me and I will send you those recordings. So thank you for your time and uh, feel free to reach out.